you want to welcome you to the Sunday morning worship service here at Southside Baptist Church in Sumter. We certainly appreciate uh, you watching today and uh, pray that uh, you've had a good week. It's tough not being in church and uh, having to um, preach like this, but this is what we have to do. But we do want to say thank you for uh, your contributing, your still giving, and helping things go on. And the work still goes on. We're still in the office. We're still doing the things we do as much as the law allows us to do. And so you pray for us. We pray for you. And hopefully before too much longer, we might be able to, to get back together again. Let's begin services by uh, this morning by prayer. And then we have one of the ladies of our church, Miss uh, Lisa Berry, is going to open us up with a special song. And then we'll bring the message this morning. Would you uh, pray with us? Fathers, we come to you today, God. I just want to say thank you for God letting us be here. Father, I pray, dear God, that, uh, Lord, it's, it's not an easy thing uh, to not really be in a, a full church service and seeing the people respond. And it, it makes a difference. But, God, I pray that uh, today you give us a special anointing, God, that you would bless what we're going to preach because... Uh, we need that today. And Father, I pray that somebody's life will be touched. I pray for Lisa as she sings, that uh, you know, she would speak to somebody through her song. Father, I pray, dear God, for the churches. Uh, many of them going through the same things that uh, we're going through. God, I pray you bless them all. Bless the pastors, God. And Father, we just thank you for what you're doing in our church. And we just pray that you keep your hand on us. We just pray, God, that you keep showing us the way and, and our leaders, God, that we follow you and, and care about one thing, Lord, and that's being in your will. And that's what we do care about. Father, we thank you for the word of God that uh, is a light in our path and lights our way. And God, we pray you would bless the preaching of it today. For it's in Christ's name that we do only pray. Amen. This time we're going to let Miss Lisa Berry come and share a song, and then we'll bring the message. Raise your hand. 
place where you could never in your lifetime ever pick a song more appropriate than this message. You will be, when you hear this message, you'll know what I'm talking about. I'm just telling you. That was for real there. Talking about a man named David. When you think about David, you can think a lot of things. But one thing you find about David was he found himself in trouble a lot. He found himself, like you say, all alone. He in this scripture, and this is the last Sunday of the month, so this is my 54th song. I've been here 54 months. And so David is uh, went and helped a city called Kalia, who were being attacked. Now remember, he's running from King Saul, King Saul's army is after him. He finds this city that needs help, and so he takes some of his men, and he goes in and he helps the city and saves the city. It's a city that is surrounded by great walls. And then David asked him a question. Because word goes to Saul that David's in that city. And so he gets his troops together because he says, if I can get there and get around that city before David gets out, I can get him because Saul wanted to kill him. He hated him. Isn't it amazing how he loved him at one time? He even married his daughter. He still hates some kind of that. Might make him hate him. I don't know. But um, he did. So he gets his troops and he goes. And so that, this is, David asked the people of the city. Now he's going to rescue them. And he asked them, he said, now if Saul and his army come, are y'all going to turn me over to them? And guess what the people in the city said? Yes. He's done rescued them. He's done saved them. And now they say, well, thanks a lot, but if he comes, we're going to give you to him. So David, knowing that Saul's on the way, he sneaks out and he gets out of the city and he heads out in the desert to a place called Zip. Start from the Z. Zip. And he's out there all alone with the armies of Saul after him. His own son is taking his kingdom away from him. And he's in a bad place. And that's the way it is in life sometimes. And, and it's just like Lisa said in her song, what do you do when you get in that bad place? What do you do when, when your heart's breaking? What do you do when you don't know the answer to your problem? You ever been there? Where you had a problem where you didn't know what to do, what was the right thing to do? Where do you go? Who do you go at? Let's look at what David did in Psalms 54. Short Psalms, just seven verses. Remember what he is. David is hiding, trying to keep himself from being killed. And he says in this prayer, he says, Save me, O God, by thy name, and judge me by thy strength. So what David is saying is, God, there's not enough strength for me to get through this by myself. I've been in this battle for a long time, and I'm, I'm making no headway. But God, I know that there's power in your name. See, we don't understand that in the world that we live in today. But if you lived in biblical days, you need, I, I, I just got through not too long ago teaching a study in here on the power of the names of God. Just not God, just his name. Jehovah Jireh, the healer. Elohim, the powerful God. That's, that's the one that, the name that he is using here. The Lord, this is the name most often used by David in the scripture here. And he, and he says, save me. And then he says, the second thing, your song, hear my prayer. Oh God, give ear to the words of my mouth. For strangers are risen up against me. And oppressors seek after my soul. Who were the strangers? The people in the city that he went and saved. Turn against him. 
Saul was the oppressor that was coming to kill him. And so he says, Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is with them that uphold my soul. And he shall reward evil unto my enemies and cut them off in thy truth. And I will freely sacrifice unto thee and I will praise thy name. You used all them words in the song. O oh Lord, for he is good. For he has delivered me out of all trouble. And my eye has seen his desire upon my enemies. So David does not know. He's in a situation where he doesn't know exactly what to do. He's on the run. Saul's found that he's been left the city, so now his soldiers are, are after him. And you know, after you run from something for so long, it gets harder and harder and harder. Until you decide sometime in your life you're going to deal with whatever it is you're running from. Sometimes it'll never get any better until you just stop running and you deal with it. And so Saul had been on the run and been on the run. And so somehow or another, sometime or another, he just takes time and he, and he stops the run. The Bible says, be still and know that I am God. Sometimes the best thing you can do to get your problem solved is just stop what you're doing and pray. And he prays and he says, save me, O God. Now here he is talking about Jehovah God. He's talking about the powerful God. He is talking about the God that can do anything. The God that created the world. He knows the power of God because he's seen it. And so he takes time and he stops and he uses the name of God. If you remember the story, there was a man in the Bible whose name was Moses. And he went by a burning bush. And God put a command on his life, and Moses was afraid and, uh, to go back to Egypt. And he asked God, he said, Lord, if I go back, why would they listen to me? I've been gone 40 years. Who am I going to tell them why I'm here? And remember what God told him? He said, tell them that I am has sent you, which means Jehovah. You tell them that Jehovah has sent you there. And he said, I'll promise you this. They will listen to you. And when Moses got to Egypt and sure enough told them that God had sent him there, the children of Israel listened to what he had to say. The name of God is so important because, now I'll tell you why it's so important, because there is only one God. There is only one God in heaven. There's only one God that answers prayer. You can pray to a thousand gods if you want to. You may have 500 gods like some people do. But there is only one God that is alive. And there's only one God that answers prayer. And his name is Jesus Christ. So he takes time and he stops and he asks God. Listen, sometimes with, with prayer we do what I call shotgun prayer. We, you know, if you got a shotgun, you got a lot of bullets in it, and you just shoot it up in the air and it just sprays out everywhere. And sometimes that's the way people pray. They'll say, well, Lord, if I've done anything today, would you forgive me? If I've done anything. Hey, how many of us go a day and don't do something that we don't need forgiveness of? But the thing about prayer and what makes a prayer an effectual prayer is when you go to God and you talk to God and you get right to the heart of the problem. There's no need to beat the bush around God. Why? He knows what was in your heart before you knelt down. Don't you think that God did not know what David wanted when David said, whoa, let's stop and pray. God said, we're fixing to get business done now. He's fixing to stop running. He's fixing to ask me to help him. God, you see, that's the thing. God's sitting there waiting to ask us to help him do these things. And he says, not by my strength. You know what David says? I run from my son. 
I've run from Saul. I've run from them people. I've lived in caves. I've lived in the desert. I was a king. I had my kingdom took away from me because I wasn't strong enough to handle it. But there is a God that's strong enough to handle it. And he says in his prayer, he said, Lord, you handle it by your strength. You handle it the way you need it. You see, sometimes truth of the matter is what? I just need for God to handle some things sometimes because I don't know how to handle it. So you just got to learn how to turn things over to the Lord and say, God, you, if, God, if you can't fix this, I, I'll be honest with you, I'm, I'm praying to you now, Lord, I don't know how to fix it. You need to do it. That's what David's saying. Here. I do not know how to fix this. So God, will you hear my prayer and in your strength, you do something about it because it is beyond what I need to do. We learn fine things in this prayer, and I'll try to just shoot right through them right quick. Number one, when David prays, he asked God to hear his prayer. Did you know that? Did you, I'm, that's something you'll skip. He prays, save me, O God, by thy strength. And then he says, God, do you hear me? Can you, do you hear what I'm saying? Now this is a something that most people don't understand about prayer. God knows always what's in our heart, and God knows what we're going to pray for. And David knew, Jesus said over in John chapter 11, he said, Lord, I know that you always hear me. David said, hear me. Jesus said, I know that you always hear me. Now, the thing about prayer is this. God always hears us in a sense. But sometimes it's good to ask God to hear us because sometimes, this is, people need to understand this. God's not a genie in a box. You just don't get down on your knees and say, God, this is what I need. God, I expect you to do it. God, don't work like that. Do you realize that sometimes your prayers do not get answered even though he does hear them? You know, I always hear people say, well, and I said, well, God, I always answer your prayers. And the more I think about that, some say, yes, no, like, and that could be true, yes. But sometimes God does not hear our prayer, and it's not God's fault that he does not hear. It's our fault that he does not hear. God says if there's sin in our life that, 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 that we have that's unconfessed, and, we, and we're living with that sin, then you know what God says? God says, not go. He says, I will not hear your prayer. So just because we pray, and David knew this. He said he prayed, but then he said, Lord, because David wasn't a perfect man either. He said, Lord, I prayed. Now, I need you to hear this. I need for you to hear my prayer. I don't need a hindrance. In Isaiah 59, 1 and 2, it says this. It says, Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to say, nor his ear too dull to hear. But your iniquities or sins have separated you from God. People don't like to hear that. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. So all of those people that say God always hears in this, they need to look at Isaiah. God says you can separate yourself so far from God and get so deep in sin that God, the only prayer that God's going to hear and listen from you is what? I'm not worried about Saul. I'm not worried about this or that. The only prayer that God's going to hear is God. I'm a sinner. I, I, I've drifted away and I need to come back. And Lord, I ask you to forgive me my sins and bring me to come back. And then he will hear you. You see, the question we need to ask today is this. Talking about prayer. This is a question for everybody looking and listening today. Is there any reason or anything going in your, on in your life that may keep God from answering your prayer. You ever thought about that? I've heard people.
people say, I've been praying about this for you. I've been praying about this for a long time. Well, there may be a reason the answer ain't coming. Number two, he distinctly describes the situation in detail that he's praying about. He doesn't, he doesn't just say, God, I need you to be with me. It's a tough time now. No, he said, God, there's an enemy out there that's trying to kill me. And he actually asked God to kill his enemies. Now, some people will say, well, preacher, you know you are not going to say stuff like that, praying for God to kill somebody. Well, I'm not the only one that ever did that. Bible's full of people. David, if you read the Psalms of David, how many times in the Psalms that David write does he ask God to slay his enemies? All the time. And he was the greatest king of Israel. But there was something that was bothering him. And he goes directly to God, and this is what people do sometimes. Though. We don't like to share our trouble. We don't like to share our heartache sometimes. We'd, we'd rather bear that burden alone than, than let somebody know that uh, we need a friend, that we need somebody that will listen and hear and, and hang in there with us through the tough times that, that we go through in life. But David, he is not hesitant one bit. He said, Lord, let me tell you what the problem is. You're going to have to take care of that, those folks because I, I can't handle it. You just need to kill them. You just need to kill them. These men that were chasing David, understand this now. This may not be a popular thing that I'm about to say, but it's God never told me to be popular. He just said, tell the truth. These men that were chasing God, are chasing David and doing all this stuff, attacking the city, tearing all that stuff down, these men did not care one iota about God. The only thing they were wanting was that man David. To slay him, to seek his life. They were loyal to Saul. David had been betrayed by them. Many of these men used to be his friend, and now they had gone to the other side. Now, this is a hard part. You know one of the hard things? I don't know if you've ever been betrayed by anybody in your life. But that's a tough pill to swallow. I have. <coughs> I have. More than one time. And this is one of the hardest things you go through when people that, that you thought you could put the most trust in it would be with you through thick or thin and all of a sudden... When the going got tough, you, they weren't there for you. It walked out on you. If you be a pastor, you find this happens more frequent than you think it would. When I preach a sermon like this, I look back on those times that happened in my life. I've had it happen by who I thought was my best friend. But in a moment when he and I had a little disagreement over an issue, walked out. Now I'm going to tell you something. Two people are Christians and they got an issue. If they both love God they ought to both be able to sit down and work that issue out and talk that issue out and come to a conclusion without getting up and one getting mad and walking out and to this day as far as I know he's never been back in the church again. It hurts. David was hurting because these men had been with him and now they have turned against him. But God knew what his problem. Say the reason you ought to go to God and tell him Joe is the problem or John is the problem or Mary is the problem or Sue is the problem or, or whoever is the problem. You don't, I mean, God knows Mary, John, Joe, and Sue. Hey, he knows what they've done to you or what you've done to them. You, you, the one thing you're never going to tell God is and you're going to tell God something, all of a sudden God's eyes are going to open up and perk up, and he's going to say, really? That happened? I'm glad you told me about it. I didn't know about it. You're never going to hear God say that. God's going to say, well, I just waited for you to come tell me about it. I already knew it. Matter of fact, God said, I knew it was going to happen before we ever did. 
So he prays to God, and, 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 he, and he goes to God, and he goes directly to God. But I love, out of all of them, I love verse 4. We sing the verse 3 where he deals with his troubles. See, we all want to have troubles in life. I, 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 I've never known anybody that I've known very long that could tell me they had had some problems and some heartaches or some heartbreaks in their life. But he said this, number three, Behold, God is my help. You know what David's saying? This ain't the first time I've ever been in a mess. When I was a boy growing up, I used to get in a lot of messes now. And I wasn't saved then. But I used to do some things that wasn't good. But I'm still living today. I, I made it through all the whippings and all the other stuff I had to go through, but it seemed like I could never get away with nothing. I cut school one day in my life. One day. And guess where I came to? Summer. I was going to Camden High School. Guess who I run into? The preacher and his wife. Guess who was with me? The preacher's two sons. So there we were, skipped school and run into my preacher. And their mom and daddy, right down there at the mall, I said, Well, I declare, I cannot believe this. And I always believed nothing happened by accident. And maybe that's true, because I never cut school again. As long as I lived in any school, I never cut another day of school again. Because when they went home and told mom and daddy what happened, <laughs> you can worry about cutting school again. He made his request to him. And he remembered God. He said in that fourth verse, Behold, God is my helper. You know why? Because that wasn't the first time God ever bailed him out. That wasn't the first time he'd ever prayed God to answer his prayers. I'm telling you right now, if you pray in person, you, you verify what I'm saying. God answers prayer. He's a prayer answering God. The problem is the prayer, not the not the one listening to it. And David said, when I'm thinking about all the things I've done and all the times that God has forgiven me, then I know that with God, he can get me out of this situation because the Bible says that there is nothing that's impossible. Hey, God can beat an army. He did. We know he can. And he makes it to, to the Lord, and, and so he encourages himself. And this is what I do sometimes. Because, you know, when you're a preacher, you always put on the smile and the happy face. Well, I'm here to tell you, life ain't always a smile and a happy face, even though y'all might think it is. There's sadness that comes in there. Our families are not perfect. Our children are not perfect. Our grandchildren are not perfect. Their granddaddy is not perfect. We've had our troubles and tears and cries and, and things over our life. But I stand here today, you know, just going through a Father's Day. You know, the, the great, I have a great father. Every one of my children came. Every one of my grandchildren came. It was just a wonderful time just seeing them there. And I remember some of the sad times. But now God got us in a good place. And so you thank God for those times when he's got you in that good place. But you don't ever forget those bad places. And David remembered what God had done for him. Let me tell you what, what Peter said. He said, cast your cares on the Lord. Cast your cares on the Lord because he cares for you. Why do you need to pray? Why do you need to pray to God? Because he loves you. Understand something. I love my children with all my heart and soul. And if there's anything I can do to help them as their daddy or their granddaddy, you need to understand something. I do it. They don't have to ask me ten times. They don't have to ask me two times. All they got to say is, Grandpa, can we do it? Yes. Grandpa, can we get it? Yes. I remember one time when Cameron and Peyton was with us, and uh, they were a little old man. 
We carried them down to the mall one day, and I've never been in one of them video stores where they got the games and all that in my life, because I ain't never played a game in my life. And I told Cameron, I said, Cameron, go in here and just pick out what you want. And he got this game, and he brought that thing out there, and that guy said, that'd be $69. And I said, do what? $69 for a video game? But what did Grandpa do? Reached in his pocket and gave me the $69. Made my little grandson happy. Never forgot that. I hope it was worth it. Uh, what, it what it's doing, I probably would never do that again. But uh, anyhow, he knows what God had done. And fourthly, he, 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 he makes his request specifically to God, and God answers his prayer, and he prays something. I, I touched on this a little. He prays for something a little strange. Sometimes you pray for strange things. You know it. Any of you ever prayed for a strange thing? I have. And uh, believe it or not, God's given me one or two of them. And uh, it must not have been strange to him. But David prays for God to slay these enemies. He said, I need you to kill them. Now, most people would look at you and, and, and say, well, preacher, it ain't right for you to say that. The Bible says we pray for our enemies. Well, we are. But I didn't say it. David said it. I'm just repeating you what he said. He said, God, I know how to tell you. I know how you, even though you don't, God don't need your help, David said, I'll tell you, I, I can give you a solution, God. You just go ahead and kill them, and I'll be fine. Go ahead and, and, and get rid of them. Even though we're to pray for our enemies, we need to pray for righteousness too. See, sometimes we forget that part. That there's a righteous way to do things. We should pray for justice from God for all people. And that is what they, you know, uh, and it's worth noting. That God, if you read the story, God did exactly what David prayed. He killed him. He done exactly that when David prayed. And then in, in closing, David says, I will freely sacrifice unto thee, and I will praise thy name, O Lord, for it is. David said, God, as long as I live, I'll thank you for what you're doing. How many times have we just prayed to God and said, God, I just want to stop just a few minutes and just say thank you. You've been good to us. You've been good to my family. I, or God, I thank you for answering that prayer. Or, or, or God, I thank you for what you're doing in the church. God, I, I, I thank you that you healed this. Well, how many times have we just... Don't say, God, would you do this? God, I need that. I need for you. Just say, God... I just want to take a minute to say thank you for letting me be here this day. Thank you, God, that I don't have the coronavirus. Thank you, God, that I can, can be here and, 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 and preach your word a little bit. Maybe somebody will understand how much you love them and what you can do for them and how you can fix their problems. Sometimes we just pray and ask. David said, Lord, I want to praise your name. In other words, God, wherever I go, you know what I'm going to do? You know, I, I could sit here and go on and on about all the things I've seen God do. But sometimes you have to do that. And you're supposed to do that. I was out walking the other day, running into a guy I've never seen before. Sunday afternoon. Started talking with him. I talked with him for 45 minutes. I got back home then and said, where have you been? I said, I ain't been right down the road the other night. She said, took 45 minutes to go there. I said, yeah, but I met this guy. I had a chance to share about the Lord and come find out he'd been to Bible school. And, and we just had a, a, good, a good thing. So sometimes we just need to praise his name before people. 
We need not be ashamed of who we are. Because the last verse says, He delivered me out of all my trouble. Now, David had a lot of trouble. For David to make that statement, He delivered me out of all. In other words, what David's saying is, I don't pray to God for a lot of things. And I'm here today. God's answered my prayer. I know that He answered prayer because you don't know all the things I've done, but He's forgiven me. I'm going to praise his name because of what he's done in my life. He has delivered me. He didn't say I have some of my troubles. He didn't deliver me just sometimes. That's a strong statement. He has delivered me out of all my troubles. I don't know anybody else to say that. From all my troubles. God heard, God helped, and God answered the prayer. When he didn't know what to do, he didn't know the answer to his problem, God stepped in. So this was a bad period for David. When he had nowhere to turn, he'd been rejected by his wife. He'd been rejected by his friends. He was alone. You know alone is a tough place to be sometimes, isn't it? When you feel like you're the only one fighting the battle. I've been there. You've probably been there. He was rejected, he was pursued, and he was betrayed. But out of all this, God delivered. And so the lesson that we learn is this. If you have a problem, take it to God. Don't underestimate the power of prayer. God wants to help his children. There's a song that we sing that says this. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never get discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find, listen to what he said, can we find a friend so bad? No. There will never be one more faithful. If you don't know the Lord, I would encourage you to talk to somebody about that. You find you a Christian friend. Find you a preacher. You need to know the Lord. We're living in a troublesome time. We're living in in times. I'd like to tell you all the things I'd like to tell you. I, I can't tell you. You'd all get mad and nobody ever listen to you. But I'm just telling you, time's running out. And if you don't know whether you know the Lord or not, you need to find somebody to talk to. If you'll pray to God and ask him to forgive you of your sins like David did, he'll come into your heart and forgive you of your sins, make you his child, put you in his family, be a child of God. You may be listening to this and you may say, Preacher, I, I'm kind of like David. I don't have the same problem, but I got problems. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to turn. I, you know, it could be I've lost my job. It could be I've been sick. It could be, it could be something's gone wrong with my child or my marriage or whatever, but God, I don't, I don't know how to fix what's going on now. Let me tell you, pray. David said, I, don't, I didn't know anything else to do but pray. And boy, did God come through. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that you see us. God, that you know us. God, there's not anything going on in our life that we can't talk to you about. There's no load that we carry that we can't give it to you. As we said, the Bible says we're to cast our cares on you. So God, if there's one that's burdened today, God, may they give it to you. Lord, I have seen you do some of the most amazing things because people pray. I'd love to have the time just to stand up and, and tell all the miracles I've seen you do. Amazing.
Father, we love you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray.